Republicans may not have the votes needed to undertake an impeachment inquiry. Let me tell you something. And that involves Joe Biden. Any Republican who votes against supporting an impeachment inquiry, we will give you their names and you should remove them from office. The information's overwhelming. And if they don't have guts to take care of business, or they're busy promoting themselves in some marginal district, I have no stomach for it. The country comes first, not their political futures. I'm quite serious about this. The Constitution provides a remedy, and even if the senators aren't going to vote for it, we'll take down their names too. When I started in this business, talk show hosts, even national talk show hosts, refused to get involved in campaigns. I changed all that with the Tea Party over 10 years ago and even before, where I got involved in a lot of campaigns. Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Mike Lee, I can't even begin to remember everybody. Um, although Rubio doesn't talk to me anymore. For re- I, I have no idea why these people do what they do. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm too hot. I don't mean that way. I mean this way. All right, but that's not what I want to get into. And by the way, in Florida, I mean, the Gulf Coast got whacked not long ago, getting whacked again starting tomorrow morning. It's so nerve-wracking. I understand that. And so... Um, you're going to see the leadership abilities, yet again, of DeSantis. Not talking, not the gift of gap, not how to turn a phrase, but you're going to see this guy, he's just, he is what he is. He's a, uh, he grabs things by, by the horns and he wrestles them to the ground. But let's get moving here. I want to read something to you because I doubt you've heard most of this. I don't want to analyze it. Judge Tanya Chutkin, the judge who just happened to get the Trump case, supposedly about January 6th. See, a judge is supposed to be a referee. Even more than that, a judge is to ensure that the rights of the defendant are protected. And there's many ways a judge can do that. Through motions, that other people file, but also just to ensure that the courtroom is handled properly. And that would include setting a date for a trial. She set the date for March 4th. Let's read what took place in that courtroom according to the New York Slimes, who had seven or twelve journalists on the case, really just two. Alan Fiera and Glenn Thrush. The federal judge overseeing former President Trump's prosecution on charges conspiring to overturn the 2020 election set a trial date on Monday for early March, rebuffing Mr. Trump's proposal to push it off until 2026. I'll break it all down. Just bear with me. The decision by Judge Tanya S. Chudkin to start the trial on March 4th amounted to an early victory for prosecutors. Can you imagine that? who asked for January 2nd, but it potentially brought the proceeding into conflict with three other trials that Mr. Trump is facing, underscoring the extraordinary complexity of his legal situation, the intersection of prosecutions, this campaign to return to the White House. The district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia, has proposed taking Mr. Trump to trial on charges of tampering with the election in the state on March 4th as well. Another case in Manhattan in which Mr. Trump's been accused of more than 30 felonies connected to non-disclosure agreements uh, in the run-up to the 2016 election has been scheduled to go to trial on March 25th. So that would be two trials the same day and then another trial on the 25th while the other two trials are going on. And if the trial in Washington lasts more than 11 weeks, it could bump up against Mr. Trump's other federal trial on charges of illegally retaining classified documents after he left office and obstructing the government's efforts to retrieve them. Now, notice the bias in the article to begin with, regurgitating the charges by the prosecutors. But let's go on. That trial is scheduled to begin in Florida in late May. 
The March 4 date set by Judge Chunkin for the federal election case at a hearing in federal district court in Washington is the day before Super Tuesday, when 15 states are scheduled to hold Republican primaries or caucuses. Judge Chunkin said that while she understood Mr. Trump had both other trial dates scheduled next year and, at the same time, was running for the country's highest office, she was not going to let the intersection of his legal troubles and his political campaign get in the way of setting a date. She said Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work regardless of his schedule, Judge Chunkin said, adding that there's a societal interest to a speedy trial. All right, let's stop right there. The speedy trial is for the defendant, not the societal interest that this judge claims to claims to know about. You're a judge, let alone a federal judge. That's your courtroom. And it's your damn job to make sure that when you set a date for trial, that the defendant has an opportunity to actually defend himself. An opportunity to go through all the information the government has amassed. Because the framers understood how powerful the government could become. In the case of Washington, D.C., it's something like 12 million documents. God knows how many witnesses. Just to read through the material, let alone prepare your case with exculpatory arguments and so forth and so on. The idea that it would take six months is a lie and a disgrace, and she knows it. She's not interested in due process by her own statement. She said Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work regardless of his schedule. Regardless of his schedule? How about regardless of the government's schedule? Stick with me. The government decided, the Department of Justice, the Biden regime, Jack Smith, to bring two federal cases virtually back to back. They knew that this would create a conflict. Judge Chunkin knows that it creates a conflict. Now, here's the big point. Judge Chunkin also knows, being a radical Marxist bomb thrower, which I'll, I'll prove later, that Judge Cannon in Florida has already set a trial date for May, which might be pushed back even further. May, the documents case. Now, the Department of Justice and Smith, the first federal case they brought, was the documents case. The second case they brought was the January 6th case. The judge in the documents case in Florida set May as the date for the trial. Chunkin on Monday set March, two months before May, as the date for her trial, knowing full well that the other court had already set a date in May Involving discovery, involving all the motions activities, involving what you do to prepare for trial. She purposely set the date of the trial, even put aside Super Tuesday, to interfere with the Florida case. She did it on purpose. She jumped the line. Her case is the second case. And now she's interfering with the timing of the first case. Nobody's brought this out. This is important. She, over the weekend, no doubt, or even before, she looked at the calendar. She's looking at the dates. She knows when these Republican primaries are. She knows where she can do maximum damage, March 4th, the day before Super Tuesday. But she also knows that the Speedy Trial Act and the right to a speedy trial is not a matter of societal interest, per se. It's a right the defendant has if the defendant chooses to use it. And the speedy trial provision of the Constitution doesn't trump the right to due process. Trump's lawyer, I'll get into this in a moment, says, we can't prepare for this on time. And she said, you got to meet your obligation. That's how sinister and diabolical this fraud is in a black robe. There is no damn way she should have ever been a judge, nominated by Obama, slips through the Republicans and the Judiciary Committee, 
There is no damn way this woman should be a federal judge. None whatsoever. Her grandfather in Jamaica, her ancestry is Jamaican, her grandfather in Jamaica was a well-known Marxist activist. In fact, he was so committed to overthrowing the government in Jamaica that for a period of time they put him in prison. She's a chip off the old block. It's like the DA in Atlanta. Her father was a Black Panther revolutionary, another Marxist, a domestic terrorist group. She's another one, chip off the old block. Then you got Bragg in Manhattan, installed by George Soros. And then you have Jack Smith, the invisible hand behind trying to destroy the Tea Party and conservative groups to help deliver elections to Obama. That's the lineup. And then we have Chunkin, the judge. Let's go on here so you understand what an abomination this is. She says, while she understood Mr. Trump at both other trial dates scheduled next year and at the same time was running for a country's highest office, she was not going to let the intersection of his legal troubles and his political campaign get in the way of setting a date. Not let them get in the way. She's setting dates to purposely make it impossible for him to campaign, and even more, to have due process. We have a whole Bill of Rights. We have a constitutional system. It's been around a lot longer than this judge. And it is extraordinary, it's actually unimaginable, that she would bend the rules and use her courtroom to treat a former president and a candidate for president this way. And Jack Smith is laughing. He got a date that he wanted. Jack Smith is running that courtroom. Jack Smith said, I want a trial in January. Jack Smith brought up the, the right to a speedy trial. She's regurgitating what he said. And then they pretend that Trump's not above the law. Not above the law. He's literally facing six Lawsuits at the same time. Six. Four criminal, one civil in, in uh, New York, and another civil in New York. Here's what she says. Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work regardless of his schedule. Judge Chunkin said, adding that there's a societal interest to a speedy trial. Her job is to make sure the defendant as a fair trial. Notice she never said that once. Mr. Trump has now been indicted, they write, by grand juries four times in four places, Washington, New York, Atlanta, and Florida. Prosecutors have been jockeying for a position. All of them are trying to find time for their trials, not only in relation to one another, but also against the backdrop of Mr. Trump's crowded calendar. It's the candidate leading the field of the Republican Party's 2024 presidential nomination. The only decisions they're making about that is to try and set dates that are most damaging to Trump. They're not trying to avoid any type of election scenario. See, Chunkin is such an idiot. She's such a bomb thrower. She's such a disgrace that she can't even hide it. Well, Judge Chunkin noted that she had spoken to the judge in Manhattan case. Hear this? It remained unclear how the judges, prosecutors, and defense teams would address the problem of scheduling four criminal trials next year as Mr. Trump is campaigning. They want her to go first. Why? Raise your hand. Because they know the lunatics out there, backed by dark money, are pushing Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. That is the lie that they can prevent Donald Trump from running. If he's charged, which he has been, and certainly if he's convicted, just one count. 